Hi, I'm Kristen O'Neill, and today's video is about mixing surfaces. So you might not think about it, um, but sometimes the surface that you're mixing your paint on can matter a lot or just make your life easier or harder. So I have here a yellow, this is a cadmium yellow, and cad red medium. And if I mix them here on this gray palette paper together with my brush, a couple of different things are happening when I do this. One is that I can see the gray through the paint. So what? Well, if this wasn't gray that's neutral, that would really matter. Uh, if I come over here to a white surface and I'm mixing, on that, you can see like, oh wow, I can almost look like a little bit blue through this glass. This glass has kind of like a little bit of a green tint, which I can see when I look at it on the side. But if I'm sitting here and I'm mixing, I can also see the white underneath. Now, when you're mixing, if you can remember, which I cannot always remember to do this, because apparently I am not perfect, who knew? But if you can remember, use a palette knife to mix your paint. Because what's gonna happen is it's going to allow you to really scoop up some paint, it's a lot of fun, and also to allow you to really get in there and really mix all of this color together. I have to say, whenever I mix these two colors together, I get really distracted by the fact that they look like ketchup and mustard a little bit in the beginning. Okay, so here I have this really hot orange color. If I come over here on my glass, you can see here it is. Now, the benefit to this paper palette is that it's disposable which I don't always like disposable things for environmental reasons, but if you're in a classroom situation, they are so handy. Also, it keeps people from washing palettes and sending all of this down the drain, which is not where it needs to go. And the neutral gray is so important. One, it's not a color, and two, the value is neutral. So if I put anything on top of white, doesn't even matter what it is. It's gonna be darker than the white. So this yellow is darker than the white. But, like, yellow isn't dark, right? And so if we have a neutral gray to start off with, that is a great way to do it. I like to combine these two, though. And I like to put glass over my gray paper. One, it's reusable when it's glass, a razor blade just scrapes it all off clean. And two, I have the neutral gray. So it's kind of like best of both worlds. I've had a lot of different palettes over the years. One time I found a palette, palette, <laughs> in an alleyway in Chicago when I was going to school there and it was um, just an abandoned like window of just a single window pane. And I was like, oh, it's perfect because it's a, a glass palette that has sides. I can't cut myself when I'm having, like hauling it around school. So I carried a window around for like six months. That was kind of funny, but it worked. I loved it. Um, so the recleanable nature of the glass is great. The gray here is great. What's not so great, let me dig it out. This monster. <laughs> this monster is my high school oil palette. I didn't even start this oil palette. I, I don't remember who started it. Um, wow, it is dusty. Don't mix on dust. It has been stored. This is kind of like my emotional thing. <laughs> like, I don't really use it, although every once in a while I might. I think this one's only like a couple of years old. Still flexible. Um, but yeah, if you're mixing paint like this, you can't use a palette knife. You're going to pick up colors from other places. Uh, it's, it just adds, it adds a, like a, 
unpredictableness, but really you just can't, you can't mix things properly. And you really want to be able to mix when you're mixing. You don't have to mix all the way, but you want to be able to have that option if you want to take it, right? So um, while this kind of makes a fun piece of abstract art, not the best palette. If you're curious, this was just a piece of scrap masonite. So funny, things I've kept for decades. <laughs> Oh, now I have hair in my paint. Okay, that's what happens when you own a Malamute. All right, so if you're mixing with a brush, what can happen here, and I am going to mix with some white, so you can see this happen a little bit easier, is you'll notice that you can get a lot of streaks going in there. See that? And then you have multiple versions of the color you just mixed on your brush. While well, that kind of looks cool by itself, when you go to paint, you're gonna be painting along and then all of a sudden there's this other color in there. That might be a technique you wanna do, but if you're gonna do it, do it with intention. Know that you're doing it. Don't be working on something really hard, be all excited about it, like, ah, oh, I finally mixed the color I want, and then blammo, the other color snuck in. So, my, to recap, my favorite is glass over the gray palette. And it's also good if you're making paint from scratch. I've been experimenting with that a little bit this week. It's been a lot of fun. And I have to tell you that just like granules of paint powder are the most gorgeous thing ever. Oh, this could be addicting. I could start doing a lot of this. But meanwhile, um, don't mix on a colored surface because your colors are gonna be wonky. It's, you're just gonna be struggling the whole time. Um, don't mix paint on surfaces you're gonna eat from, safety tip. The color you're using at the moment might not be toxic, but maybe the next color is. Um, so just keep, you know, keep food and things apart. I know sometimes people use plates, but if you're gonna do that, use a dedicated plate or a disposable plate. Um, don't put it back in the in the kitchen okay so um be safe so you can keep painting and i'll see you next time please like and subscribe for more or visit my website at kristenonealart.com for online classes